Curried chicken on pizza is nothing new in places like Delhi, India, where Western cuisine has become popularized. But it generally tastes like exactly what it is, chicken curry baked on non bread, which is okay, but it's not a fusion dish. I like that basic idea, but I wanted to make something that really fuses these two cuisines together and is greater than the sum of their parts. The combined taste here is completely unique, nothing like you would expect and nothing like the simplified chicken curry pizza you might have tasted before. Okay, I got a couple of green chilies here. I'm just going to remove the stems off of those and give them a coarse chop just to get them into the, into the cup to go along with the onions, ginger and garlic, a couple of good dollops of yogurt. I'm using a yeah, really good fat one from Germany, but you can use you can use any. Don't use non fat. Then the garam masala. I'm using one that I made myself. You can uh, use a commercial one if you want to save some time, or this the recipe here for the one that I'm using. And uh, juice from half a lemon. I get uh, about 350 grams of chicken. As explained in the ingredients list, and this is obvious when you just put the, uh, the marinade on it, stir it around, and refrigerate it for a while. The marinade, marinated chicken is finished. I've got um, the butter and a little bit of oil heating up in the pan. The oil keeps the butter from burning. The butter foams up like this a little bit. You know it's past the, the boiling point of water. You can start adding chicken into it. You're going to have to do this in a couple of batches, maybe even three batches. You don't want to have the pan have more than one layer of chicken at the bottom at a time. So after about three minutes on one side, you turn it over. The heat on the pan is fairly high. I've got it on the eight, actually, out of one to ten. Of course, because there's so much liquid here, you're not really going to brown the chicken. You're just going to make sure that it's cooked on the outside. It's not pink anymore. And while the chicken is cooking, you've got uh, this bunch of cilantro. It's about uh, 30, 40 grams. Uh, you want to make sure that you do use the root ends, but uh, cut the, the very tips of the roots off. But you want all the stems in here. It's actually more flavor in the stems than there are in the leaves uh, for cilantro. And... Uh, like this, and load it up into the food processor cup. The chicken's still cooking with it. And this is one of those rare times when a dried herb is actually going to work better for you than a fresh herb. I'm using uh, just over a teaspoon of dried mint. I'm adding water to this. Chicken is uh, finishing. We've got the <coughs> cilantro and mint uh, solution ready. You can see there's a lot of uh, solids that are accumulated on the bottom of the pan here. We get a lot of the chicken out here. Drain off any liquid back into the pan that come off easily. Now into this and add the tomato sauce. This is pureed tomatoes as I explained before. In restaurants we call this tomato sauce but it's really nothing more than pureed tomatoes. And we're going to cook this down real well. This is what it looks like after just a couple of minutes. With any, as with any other masala you want to cook this over medium heat because there wasn't very much volume. It didn't take that long. After about eight minutes, you've got very dark red masala here. Now we're going to add the chicken back into the pan. Along with whatever else you can scrape off of the plate here. Get this coated. 
just a little bit more now to try to get some color on the chicken now now that we actually can the most of the liquid evaporated off so and it leave like this turn it up just a little bit and then another six minutes here and stirring this once in a while not too much and uh, the <coughs> mixture is starting to stick to the bottom of the pan despite the no stick <laughs> non-stick surface on the pan it's still sticking it's, it's starting to get really thick I'm going to give it just like one, maybe one, two more minutes. Okay, it's been a couple more minutes here. We're not <clears throat> it's not a lot more progress to be made here before you start burning it. So now I'm going to add that cilantro mint and water solution. Turn the heat down to about three and begin simmering this. And this is also the time you can add salt. I'm adding about a teaspoon of salt to it. Don't forget, it's not going to be consumed directly. It's going to be used on top of something else. So it might seem like a lot of salt, but it'll be just fine in the end. Okay. Let's just for a little bit and simmer. In fact, what else we can do is we can make sure that when it doesn't get too thick too fast, we can put a lid over part of it. <clears throat> After an hour, this is what you've got. It's almost homogenous. This, the chicken and the sauce are practically one. And we're going to stop it here, take it out. The next day, after this has been refrigerated, I have a bit of a messy operation to perform here. All this out, and you can't really use a food processor for this because it'll, it'll go too fine. You don't want it to be tiny, tiny bits like a paste, but you do want to break this piece of chicken up into something that's going to be more spreadable. That's enough. Then it goes back in the box for use. What I recommend doing in home ovens. If you don't have a pizza oven, you bake it two times. Poke some holes in it, bake it the first time for a few minutes, take it out, then put the toppings on it and put it back in the oven. Otherwise the crust will never get crispy. Meanwhile, I've got some cheese that I grated here. This is similar to um, Jack cheese in the U.S., Monterey Jack. It's a custom sukhoi in Russia. It's an excellent, excellent pizza cheese. It's actually my favorite cheese for pizza, but uh, you probably won't be able to get that. And I'm running uh, a red onion uh, down a mandolin at uh, one half millimeter slices um, just to separate the rings like this. We're going to use these. Now we've given it a head start by baking the crust to get crisp on the bottom. And applying a little bit more of that same yogurt. Don't use a non-fat yogurt. Then the red onion. Be generous with this. This is a big part of the flavor. You don't like onion, you'll like this. Then cheese. Put this topping down. Here's the tricky part. You have to <laughs> you have to kind of spread this out manually here. Make it as good as you can make it. And how much you use is of course up to you too. You want a good layer of this though. This is after all what it's all about. More like a flat bread really than a pizza. It's really what it should be called. Okay. going to go in the oven, back in the oven. About seven more minutes here. And it comes out of the oven. Yeah, a little more cilantro to the top of it.
Also look for my cocktail book, Cocktails of the South Pacific and Beyond, Advanced Mixology, available through Amazon online.